this is why you all need me. I'm like your Karin the Boatmaster for the Tuttle Twins. I will shepherd you down the river Tut. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our channel. I am Jen, this is James, and this is Fundy Fridays, and here on our channel, we talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, American conservative politics, pop culture, and gay stuff. We were going to make a totally different episode. Um, we were going to do a retrospective on Christian video games, PC games, console games. We had a whole, like, 30-page script prepared. We still do. It's still yeah, there. Yeah, like, still... we can... It's coming. It's a very, very sore subject. Yeah. So we got a retro PC mm -hmm. and we were playing PC games. We were playing emulators. We had like a whole collection. We pretty much played with every single Christian video game and recorded tons of footage on Hypercam, unregistered Hypercam 2 even. And we did not back the shit up. And we went to turn on the computer the other day to play Bible Man. And Which we bought. CD. It like it wasn't even blue screen of death. It was like mm. gray screen. We'll insert footage to show you yeah. what it was looking like. Uh, so we're gonna have to like take that somewhere to be repaired because it's a it's a new PC that has Windows XP on it. So it's actually it's, very it's cool. It's like complicated. I don't know how to fix it. Yeah. But anyway, we lost all of our footage. So we're going to postpone that episode till yes. next year. Uh, give us some time to get the footage back or find gameplay footage or yeah. whatever. We're going to do a whole thing. We'll make it. We'll make it even better. So long story short, we had prepared a bunch of stuff and we were going to film it today but that didn't work out so we had to throw together a new episode because we have a contractual obligation to put out an ad for Casetify so we have to have an episode so we were like what could we pull together really quickly and James remembered um, Tunnel Twins Wrestling with Socialism which features elements of both pro wrestling I think specifically lucha wrestling because um, Grandma Gabby is is going to be a, a luchador, um, yeah. and it's also socialism themed. It's the first appearance of cartoon Karl Marx, and there you go. This <laughs> pilgrim here is voiced by Kevin Sorbo, who what well, he used to be on Xena, right? Or is that a different guy? Was he on Xena? No, Princess? please tell me. I really hope this is not a joke. Is this how I find out that he's not? No, he was Hercules, and he and he and Lucy Lawless, who yes. was Xena, and is a really cool person. At least last time I saw, uh, they get into Twitter beef. Lucy all Lawless the time was was on Hercules, or she was she was Xena. She was Xena. He was Hercules, and her show did better than his. Okay, guys. So no surprise, but I was right. Kevin Sorbo and Lucy Lawless both starred on Hercules. Um, Lucy was on there for 11 episodes, and then she got a spinoff, which was Xena, Warrior Princess. And allegedly, the beef between them starts because she took half the crew that he was using on the set, and her show was more popular. That's what Kevin Sorbo was saying. Now, I don't think that it was up to Lucy Lawless, an actor on the show, to to steal the crew away from him, but okay. Then he got mad because Sam Raimi hired her for Spider-Man and Kevin Sorbo's like, well, she's married to his partner, so that's why. And also um, there was an affair and like all this shit that's like really fucked up. And then it really beefs up because he was tweeting about the insurrection and she goes off on him and she's like, Calling, calling him a D-bag and stuff. Um, anyway, I like to believe that while, yes, it is terrible what happened to our other planned episode, I like to believe that uh, Angel Studios dropped this little gem into our lap. Specifically for you. Because um, I, I even mentioned this bad boy in my original Tuttle Twins review um, that I was going to come back and review this. Now, I didn't necessarily plan to do it right now, but <laughs> hey, man, when when Destiny calls you, uh, uh, what was the, what did the guy say in Sound of Freedom? When God tells you what to do, 
you cannot hesitate. And God has told me to make fun of this particular <laughs> episode of this Libertarian Kids show with all of you, our if friends. If you don't know. Yeah. Tuttle Twins. Woo! The official Tuttle Twins account commented on James's video and... I fully wanted to be too cool for school and yeah. not ever, like, make another Tuttle Twins video. I know I say I, I mean I mean he, but whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I I don't want to. I'm Fundy Fridays. Don't get me wrong, He's Mr. Fundy Fridays. We pinned their comment on the last video. They were very respectful in their discourse. Right. Well, what I'm trying to say yeah. is I'm not trying to be like mm -mm. we're the Tuttle Twins channel. No. We we don't want to have a back and forth relationship no. with with the Harmon brothers or Tuttle twins. This was going to be a Patreon episode and really? then the computer died. Yeah. So this is what you're getting. This I'm week. glad it's not though. I think this is yeah, relevant we can for do, all. We can do more fun stuff with it. If you want to support the channel, we have Patreon and channel memberships. They get you the same thing. Um, merch discount, discord access, behind the scenes videos and live streams. Speaking of which, we are not making a video next week. Mm -hmm. um, that's our uh, holiday break since we had to make a video this week. Uh. <laughs> um, so we're taking next week off, but we are doing a stream on Friday for patrons and channel members. Mm -hmm. And if you join, um, you'll see the link. I'll post yep. it today. Um, and we're going to stream. I think we should do it at normal video time. Yeah, I think I because agree. Sometimes we stream on Sundays at noon so that, like, we can hit all the time zones, including um, Europe and Australia. But it's a Friday, and I think people will be at work. Yeah. So we're going to do it Friday at 7 p.m. Central, yeah. which is the normal time for videos. I'm sorry. If you live in a time zone where that's not reasonable, I'm sorry. Um, it'll be available to watch later. But we haven't done a stream in a while, and we're not going to try and do video games or any of that crap, which is how we screwed up the last live stream. Mm -hmm. We're just going to talk, Have chat, fun. answer questions, maybe watch some things on, on the screen. But we're just going to have a chill live stream for, for you patrons and channel members. December 1st, 7 p.m. Central. Look for the link when you sign up. Um, we have been on a lot of podcasts recently. It's mm -hmm. kind of hard to keep track of check my link tree, which is in my info box, or you can just go to, I think it's link dot tree slash Monday Fridays or something. I'll put it on the screen. Mm -hmm. Um, we have merch available. I'm wearing one of the designs. This is the Fundy Fridays tarot design. It's so good. By Lauren Marvell behind us is the new deconstruction poster. You can barely see it. There it is. Um, along with lesbian socialist Republic. We also have some other new, really cool designs. Um, all those are available on my bonfire store. Um, right now until January 1st, 2024, we have a 15% discount code. Um, it is holiday 15. Use that at checkout. It takes 15% off the items in your cart. It does work on stickers. Cause I know I can't help it with the stickers. The shipping is highway robbery. I totally agree. And if you were waiting on getting a sticker, now they're 15% off. Yeah. Um, we're working on that by we the are. way. Um, is there anything mm -hmm. else? Um, I'm trying. Oh, yeah. Um, today's video is sponsored by Case Defy, and you'll have to forgive us. It's not a skit. It's just a regular ad. Um, I'm going to put on the screen when it ends now. Here at Fundy Fridays, we'd like to thank Case Defy for sponsoring today's video. And Jenna Knights can go to www.casedefy.com forward slash Fundy Fridays today to save 10% off their order. That's casedefy.com slash Fundy Fridays for 10% off your order. Longtime fans of Funny Fridays probably know that Case Defy has been a helpmeet of the channel for years now, but did you actually know they've been around for over a decade in the mobile protection and accessory game? Combining style with function the way they do, though, it's really not hard to see why Case Defy is the world's number one brand for mobile protection and accessories. So if you're looking for both form and function, Case Defy's got you covered. Their impact and ultra impact cases provide optimal protection while maintaining sleekness, and they provide up to 11.5 feet of drop height protection. They are also made of up to 65% recycled and plant-based material. Case Defy believes that phone cases are a means of self-expression. They aren't just cases, they're canvases. I chose this one because it's got a really cute bee, it's very cottage core, and you know, you've got your MagSafe ring there so you can charge your phone on a charging pad and still get to wear 
your super cute case. Here's this one, of course, because it has FF on it for Fundy Fridays. I gotta always remember who made me. That's the Jenna Knights. I wouldn't be anything without you guys. So FF, Case Defy, we love it. And I chose this one because once again, we've got a celestial thing going on and we've got this moth. And I chose this because I am bisexual. This is our animal, so. And this case right here is actually my daily driver that I use every single day to protect my phone. And fun fact, it comes to us from Case Defy partner artist, Bodil Jane. And Bodil Jane is just one of the many partner artists that you'll find producing incredible prints and art for Case Defy. So once again, we here at Fundy Fridays would like to take a moment and thank Casetify for sponsoring this video. You all can go to casetify.com slash Fundy Fridays right now and save 10% off your next order. So thanks again to Casetify, and let's head back to the video. Okay, James. Do you think you can summarize the Tuttle Twins, at least the concept behind the yeah. Tuttle Twins, the Harmon Brothers and Angel Studios in five minutes or less? I, I sure you do. You can go over a little bit. I sure do think I can. Okay. Um, I think five minutes or less. I don't think I'll go over. So, first of all, I would say uh, I would encourage everybody to go and check out my original Tuttle Twins video. I don't know if it's my magnum opus, but it's definitely the video I had the most fun making. Okay, I think it's We Are the Champions, We Will Rock You, <laughs> because they're both Angel Studios. With Sound of Freedom. Yes, with Sound of Freedom, because yeah. they're like, they're like, sister episodes very much so and you get this overarching and sound of freedom if you haven't seen james's sound of freedom video it is <laughs> so you. good Thank i think that's you. the best one you've done this year i i like to think but so. the tunnel twins is literally that. second so and 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 we say all this to highlight that both the of father these... the son this is I wouldn't call this the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't call this like, <laughs> this is the third in what I would call the Angel Studios trilogy, but it's less like Return of the Jedi and more like the Star Wars Christmas special. Yeah, is it um, canon? <laughs> yeah, it's, I wouldn't, I would say it's canon, but we're more doing this just, it's, I'm, it's I'm, out on the tiles. It's, it's Darth Maul's robot legs from the, from the novels. I want to be B. Arthur. You're allowed to be, B. oh, B. Arthur pouring <laughs> liquid into that guy's head. Yeah. <laughs> But Angel Studios is the Mormon-based streaming service slash production Christian media production juggernaut that has risen over like the past. Made by Mormons yeah. for evangelicals. Every kind of but Christian. But Mormons like it too. Yeah, they're making a very kind of unifyingly conservative Christian brand. They have stuff for conservative evangelicals. They have stuff for conservative Catholics. They mm -hmm. have stuff for Mormons. They that What's that? Bethlehem starring Lecrae? Yeah, they, uh, Journey to Bethlehem. And, and Antonio Banderas is in that one. He's like a king or something. Uh, I said in my uh, Sound of Freedom video, they were doing uh, Dry Bar Unscripted, which was their improv thing mm -hmm. with Colin Mockery. I do have some positive news to report on that front. I have not, I went back and looked. It seems like he's not involved in the advertising anymore. I don't know if it was just a one-time thing. Maybe he didn't know what he was getting involved in. But So it seems like Colin may have skedaddled away from that, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but anyway... So Angel Studios is is trying to really establish itself as the new leader in Christian evangelical conservative entertainment. And one of the ways they've done that is through this TV show, The Tuttle Twins, this cartoon. This is an adaptation of a book series by a man named Connor Boyack. He's the president, I forgot about him. president and founder of the uh, Libertas Institute. There's like three ways to say it. That's what I'm going with. It's a, it's a libertarian think tank out of Utah. The channel Savvy Writes Books recently did a deeper dive On the in, books. into Connor Boyack's books, the actual books libertarian children's books behind the cartoon show i highly recommend that video uh because i only went into a little bit of the books uh she goes much more in detail and it's excellent work hello sorry Taro. hello taro by the way wearing my bray wyatt for the first time since he Rest passed r.i.p to a legend so the tuttle twins uh cartoon show is angel studios adaptation of this libertarian children's book series that was really popular with conservative evangelical homeschool parents. They have a, an academic or an economic curriculum. Economic. Yeah, it teaches like libertarian economic theory. It's specifically an economic okay. curriculum. I thought it I was like, are they teaching history? Uh, well, they'll teach history some regards, but they really are honing in on this like low taxation labor stuff. That's where he really likes to be. The Tuttle Twins show is produced notably by one of 
of the the Harmon brothers, there's like five of them and a cousin involved. There's a bunch of Harmon brothers. It's a Mormon fan, you know how it is. But Daniel Harmon, not Dan Harmon of Community. That is the first thing everybody <laughs> asks me. Is it the Community and Rick and Morty guy? No, it is not him. Uh, and he goes by Daniel Harmon, I think, to try and differentiate. <laughs> Um, he's the Harmon brother who's the executive producer of this show, and you can tell in interviews that it's clearly his baby. He wants it to be this huge thing that that reaches conservative kids everywhere and reaches maybe even like some moderate kids and some parents who, you know, are like, oh, maybe libertarianism. They're really trying to make this mainstream, and they've made no secret about that. The show, I the way I've described it to people is... Um, it's kind of like if uh, Ben Shapiro wrote fan fiction for Phineas and Ferb. Ben Shapiro does have a children's show now. And, yeah, speak of the devil and he shall We'll appear. get to it. Yeah, Chip Chilla, his bluey copycat thing. I will get there, don't you worry. I still have to do Ben Shapiro, wink, wink, 24. Um, I don't. <laughs> I don't know if you're ready for that monster. How much tape? So much tape. So the Tuttle Twins TV show, the books are really known, and you'd see this more in Savvy's uh, review, but they're very dry. They're they're very um they're they're very I say they're very much written for the people who are gonna buy them, not the people who are gonna read them. They're not the we're filming this late at night, yeah, y'all, by the way. It's been a weird couple of days. We really wanted to see y'all. The show is trying very hard. You can tell it's got a an ambitious animation team. They try very hard. It looks like a mainstream kid show, in my opinion. It's a little choppier. The animation's not always like the cleanest. Are we talking about Tuttle Twins? Yeah, Tuttle Twins. It's funny though. It's got some good humor. They have some good like, jokes. Bruce? Mm -hmm. Can I interest you in a canvas? <laughs> I know you see me as a bully, but my purpose on this show is to serve as a metaphor for certain nations who refuse trade and are thus excluded from the mutual benefits that come with it. That's one of the Angels' things. They've gotten a lot of talent. They get talented folks, and I think this writing staff tries really hard. Don't get me wrong, it falls flat and weird a lot of the time, too. <laughs> Corinne, and I'm here to say government surveillance is the price we all have to pay. The NSA is here to stay. Say it! So excited. That. Have you seen any previews um, for this? I did. And so the preview, I watched the trailer and it hit me. It was like one thing after it over. It was Grandma Gabby in a lucha mask. Oh wait, she's doing a friggin' frog splash onto Karl Marx. The debut of Karl Marx. He was in the original promo art from season one, and they never brought him in except for the painting. Is that in, where that um, arm wrestling picture comes from? Yes, that was okay. promo art that never that I never saw. At least I never saw Karl Marx show up. So this is his debut, and obviously, like this is the guy Gabby hates. She's made multiple references to him. Like, yeah. What if we find out that they've dated? It yeah, because Grandma Gabby's like, she's had a lot of boyfriends. Well, she called him a terrible father in that one episode. Karl Marx was a terrible father. And I'm trying to figure out where they're going with this. So I get Lucha Mask Gabby. What if this. there's like a and secret then, family? And then they hit me with like the, it's like one in three punch hit. Boom, boom, uppercut. Kevin Sorbo's a pilgrim. Oh, wait, you can't see the fist. Fist, Kevin Sorbo's a pilgrim. Like that. Yeah, like that was me. I'm like... I got yeah, if you case this. you forgot. I, I said very specifically I expected this show to offend me on no less than three levels, which uh, were wrestling fan, leftist, and decent person. And so uh, we're going to see if it holds up, and we wanted all of you to join us. In case you don't know, wrestling is James's fundies. Yeah. Like, he knows everything there is to know about wrestling. Yeah. Um, we do have a fan... I won't name them, but we have a fan who's a wrestler. And we got a couple now. Hi, we love you. We got a couple um, wrestlers who are fans. And let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all, I do this for the adoration of the Genonites, but the wrestlers hold a special really little pocket in my heart. If you wrestle, you're like cooler than everyone else. I'm sorry. So this episode was literally Taylor written for you. Yeah. And I'm just here to provide some commentary. Uh, you're the main star. You could probably even switch seats with me if you want to be closer to the camera. Uh, it's up to you. I'll project so y'all can hear my commentary. We're going to have a little fun watching this. And Sorry about the screens. Like, first of all, the webcam is a square and the yeah. monitor is a rectangle. So they were never going to fit fit together on the same mm -hmm. screen and then i was like i need a cool background like maybe to help us with copyright although they never copyright mm -mm. claimed you for total twins i almost wonder if it's a 
if it's like a principal thing. I get since the they're vibe. libertarians. Yeah. Or maybe we just got lucky because I'm also like, if we get struck, if we get well, first of all, uh. if they strike us. That's hilarious. We're going to make an episode about it. Here's the thing I'm going to say, and I'm talking... <laughs> but I just wanted to make the screen Here's small the so that we could avoid copyright, maybe. Plus, it's Thanksgiving! Here's yeah. the thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to look directly into the camera for this one. Now, I'm talking to some people very specific. I'm talking to the Tuttle Twins team. Now, I like to believe I got a staff meeting, okay? <laughs> I like to believe that when my video came out, y'all had a little Friday chit-chat, and we're like, okay, do we need to say something? Here's the thing I'm going to say. The only cool thing you're doing right now is this non-copyright stuff. I bet stuff. you were the talk of, of church on Sunday. I hope. I sure hope. Look, man, hate watching gets views too, and you got to get them any way you can get. If a bunch of if a bunch of deconstructing adults watch your show just to make fun of it, that counts for money. Don't you let them tell the otherwise. Don't copyright us. Oh yeah. So how can the fans watch this at home if they want to? Well, it's on. I feel like I have to say it. It's on Angel Studios streaming service. Um, one little fun tidbit from my Sound of Freedom video. Angel Studios very publicly made a purchase of, or they purchased Angel.com. Mm. So they now own that. They paid two million dollars for it. Who um, was sitting on it? Some random prospector. Oh. Everybody thought it was. Um, Porn. It was. Um, <laughs> It was That's what uh, I immediately thought. Angie's List. All the speculators at the time thought it was Angie's List that bought it, and they were going to do like a rebrand. And then all of a sudden, it was like, okay, Christian streaming service. That's fine. But because apparently, there's a bunch of people who is there a devil dot com? I don't know if there's or not. Let's I'm not sure go we there. We're not going it. to that website. Hey everybody, it's uh, James here in editing, and uh, I got curious and wanted to see just to let you all know, devil dot com does in fact redirect you to mybible.com so unfortunately that's christians one satanists zero okay so i before we jump in i feel it important to give just a quick uh very slapdash uh history lesson here lucha libre is uh the mexican tradition of pro wrestling it's incredibly theatrical athletic bright colorful animated and it is an absolutely beautiful tradition upon which a great deal of american wrestling is built many different cultures have some sort of form of this professional wrestling like non-greco-roman mm -hmm. like yep. predetermined outcomes and fun uh, and and sometimes very serious storylines the characters the the theatrical element to it um and each culture kind of puts their own flavor into it. Like in Mexican wrestling, they do a lot of religious and even Catholic mm -hmm. themes. And whereas like the American style wrestling, that has its origins in... Traveling carnival shows. Yeah. What would you say about like Japanese wrestling? What are they known for? Japanese wrestling, uh, you'll hear it often referred to as strong style wrestling. So it's, I joke that it's wrestling for a country with universal health care. It's yeah. very... it's Like it, you're supposed yeah. to, like you punch punch each other but like not with full force everywhere else japan, In japan they're yeah. like oh we're going to actually break your japan face. japanese wrestlers learned that the best way to not make that someone every, it's dangerous wherever because you can hurt yourself no matter what you're doing but japanese wrestlers learned that the best way to make someone look like they've been hit really hard is to hit them really hard and so that's you know they they just commit to the craft like that it's much more martial arts influenced the storylines and the talking at least in the up until relatively recently didn't matter quite quite as much whereas like in lucha that's a huge part of it the, the storyline the, is the main thing you know I would the say. the bragging and the the bravado and and cutting you know cutting your promos and things like that is huge in in lucha libre and the other thing i like to mention is that lucha libre is often imitated and parodied and mentioned in other media very rarely is it gotten super the well the respect that it deserves the respect it deserves um sometimes it's treated respectfully oftentimes it's not um, interestingly enough, you talked about Catholic iconography. That wrestling mask in the middle of the ring there actually is very reminiscent of El Santo, a very famous longtime luchador from Mexico, the saint, who wore a solid silver mask and uh, was very famous for it. So I really hope they do a good job for having a family of uh, Cuban origin. They did manage to work some Spanish in in the, in the rest of the episodes. Is it and inappropriate or offensive that they made... Grandma Gabby, a luchador. I mean, Lucha Libre is very... 
it it does have kind of a it's not necessarily Mexico exclusive, but it is predominantly Mexico. And I would worry because Grandma Gabby and for, if we didn't mention this before, the family is Cuban in uh, the show. In the books, uh, the family's white, all white. Everybody's white. In the show, they changed it so that Grandma Gabby is Cuban. Conveniently, so yeah. they could throw in anti-Cuba plots. Yeah, and they used that almost entirely to be as awful as possible as they could to Cuba. Won't I just worry that they are faith. lumping all like Latin culture together. Yeah. But, I mean, we'll see. I'll I don't want to accidentally yeah. do that either. And I also don't want to be so <laughs> ignorant as to say that Cuba doesn't have a Lucha Libre culture. I could absolutely be wrong. But I, I just... If you're a part of this very specific niche, please yeah. chime in. I have, I have a guy I have to talk to. But anyway, let's continue. Hey, everybody. James in editing. So we start off the episode by seeing one wrestler and one group of wrestlers introduced. The first wrestler, La Araña Blanco, or the White Spider, uh, seems to be a large yet very agile wrestler. He is followed by Fuego y Azufre, Fire and Brimstone. So again, tapping into that religious iconography a little bit. And then we find out that both this extremely fast and large luchador and this team of flaming luchadors will be facing off against Grandma Gabby's own debuting lucha persona. La Abuelita? Grandma? Yes! La Abuelita! Okay, I'm gonna say that this this is people who don't... She needs a better entrance than that. People who don't watch wrestling, uh, I will say this is more realistic than... This is a three-way match. Yeah, it's... Well, this is actually a match structure I've never seen before. It, unless she's teaming with with the, uh, spider. the white spider. The I'd like to take the time to have you talk about an actual famous um, old lady wrestler. Please. Which one? Are you wanting to talk about May? Yeah. May Young? I mean, yeah. Well, she I wasn't was going to say, this is, this is not, uh, for people who aren't wrestling fans, this may seem more ridiculous than it actually is. May Young was wrestling into her 80s, putting over guys like the Dudley Boys and taking power bombs off the top rope. Uh, I'll probably put some footage here where you can see it because it's rad. Uh, and Grandma Gabby, I mean, I'll say a lot of things about her. Most of them ain't nice, but I'll say she's tough. So May Young, for those who don't know, is um, a longtime American pro wrestling legend and absolutely sweet old lady and may young honestly was wrestling uh, at a time where it was basically just her and about two other women in the entire country basically wrestling with each other and getting paid diddly squat and getting treated like crap to do it and she really laid the groundwork for the incredible women's wrestling scene we have around today so um it's not too awful surprising to see grandma gabby in there i'm hoping la abuelita does well yeah because i mean, her say like this is clearly a no disqualification match yep and she ended with the Kyrie Sane elbow from the top rope. Wow. Okay. That, what do you think about that? I We didn't see. She probably it's implied that she won. Yeah, it's implied that she won. I hated it less than I expected to. I hope they do it again. I hope she she's probably gonna I hope she Carl fights Hart. again. I hope she she seems to be one. Inter and oh. oh yeah, Mexico is they do a lot of intergender wrestling. Um yeah, they're more comfortable with that than the US was for a long time. Which I understand um, the optics of why that's not a popular yeah. thing, but I think yeah. it's cool that Grandma Gabby wrestled all those. those it was. <laughs> what? What? Oh. Pause it right what? now. The who thou what's up? The white fighting? spider versus the communist condor. Okay, now I'm forced to wonder why the spider is white. Yeah, now I'm like, is there a... Do you have some... Uh, it's... See, Tuttle, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, Tuttle team, listen to me. Cam meet me over here at camera two. Um, <laughs> like, the communist condor... I know There's it's so a kid's show. Ones than that, that was so fast, too. Sneak it up on me. Give me a chance. I know how this is going to go. I was a weirdly Republican child who would have been into this stuff, and that would have bothered me. That was too fast. Too fast. So we find out that the kids are looking to go to a big wrestling show in their hometown. We do also admittedly get some redemption for the communist condor. The communist condor be there he gives everyone an equal beat down excuse me yes corinne you lucky lucky girl that's a that's really good tagline <laughs> oh my god you I should hate be how... the... you should be the communist condor 
You cos- should become him. I haven't cosplayed in like a decade. Do I need to dust off the time? I say that like I didn't do Bible Man in my backyard <laughs> six months ago. Corinne, the girl in red, in, ver- in many red, that's color coded for a reason. She is the liberal leftist, and they get the two confused. They don't really understand the difference. Um, she's the stand-in. She represents almost all of left-leaning ideology is encapsulated in that redhead right there. And so I like that she's got her wrestler too. That's cute. I also was a cheer for the heels kid. Heels are bad guys. They're the bad guys in wrestling. So when I was a little kid, I was like, yeah, I like the bad guys because you're tough. You know, and I, and I liked Corinne. Everybody uh, in the last video liked Corinne. Queen Corinne was a, <laughs> was a moniker that was dropped a lot. But tickets are expensive, about $200 each. So the kids think about it and decide to sell tamales made by Ethan and Emily's mom in order to raise the funds. When it's revealed that one of the kids is sick with tonsillitis, the other children decide to split their earnings equally and make sure everyone's ticket gets paid for. This is what Vince McMahon wants us to think will happen if he gives his wrestlers health insurance. Two hundred dollars a ticket. I I That's have funny and I'm keeping it. In. I am trying to think. What is the most money I've ever paid for a wrestling ticket? You for my birthday one year got me sixty dollar wrestling tickets, and I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure we were close. those were the most expensive wrestling tickets we've ever gotten. I have never gotten anywhere that was close. AEW. That was AEW, yeah. And so we paid extra. But um, $200, man, unless those are... Uh, kids, I think you need to go farther down the Ticketmaster. Those are probably like <laughs> ringside. You need to sort by nosebleed. Hey, they got a sick kid. They could just get in for free. Note that the mom fills what appears to be an unlined metal garden wagon with uncovered tamales for the kids to drag around town and sell. It's incredibly libertarian. After a montage of tamale sales, the kids all meet to share their earnings. Some of the kids, like Emily, worked hard and made a lot of money, but others, like Ethan and Corinne, the show's main evil liberal character, well, they slacked and didn't make enough. Furthermore, the kid with tonsillitis took too long to recover and couldn't sell anything at all, although he did find one rather disturbing way to contribute. I'm sorry. I thought I'd be better by now. But I did get two dollars from the tonsil fairy. <laughs> what kind of economic lesson are they trying to do here? Okay, so this is the thing I that... I feel like this isn't... I'm anticipating it. I can already see a little bit of food on Corinne's cheek, which leads me to believe that they're going to kind of do a she ate all the tamales and didn't do any work angle. Because um, that's what they do with Corinne. She very much is just going to be like, I didn't work hard, but it's still not fair that I don't get to go to the wrestling show, so everyone should give me money. It is the most, like, email forwards from your terrible uncle version of left-wing ideology yeah, it's like that you those, can like... possibly think of. And I would argue Tuttle writing team, again, because I know some of y'all are watching this, uh, you're better than this. You're better than this. And um, also, I don't like the implication that because the kid was sick, I don't know, that feels weird. Like he's a, he's supposed to pull his own weight even though he's sick. Yeah, like and that. Like, the whole, the point would, the, the good lesson to learn from this would be, oh, sometimes our friends yeah. can't raise the, the money for something. Or, or sometimes our friends can't, you know, always do that. Mm-hmm. And so it's nice to help them out when we have extra. Instead, they're going to turn it into, if you don't work, then you don't deserve my money. What you should do is you should cook all the tamales, and then you should serve them at a party where you buy the pay-per-view of the wrestling show. Because that's like 60 bucks, dude. And then you like, and then you have all your friends over. You can watch it on your couch. During a last ditch failed sales frenzy, Ethan and Emily find Grandma Gabby going full apocalypse now in what is essentially a game of tag against her trash eating pet raccoon, Derek. The kids inform her of their collectivist issue while Gabby gets hit with a tranquilizer dart from Derek for some reason. Realizing her grandkids were once again in need of some political re-education, the drugged up geriatric lets her children and pet operate her motor scooter on a trip back through time while ranting about socialism. Again, very libertarian. This is how they always introduce her. She shows up just in the middle of another activity. That's fun. Yeah, it's like, I'll I'll admit the camo was a surprise. I'm really upset by how this is going already. Because, like, it's, it's, I just really hate the demonization of people that are on benefits and, Mm -hmm. like, treating, like, the whole fucking, 
welfare queen stereotype that Reagan invented mm-hmm. that is so harmful. Yeah. It's like it's like what you're teaching children this. You're teaching them incorrect values. See, like like it's so upsetting that for them to be like, well, people that are on welfare are lazy. Like See what gets that's me what is they're fucking doing. They had this very like 80s Reaganistic view of the world on this show. And it does feel, I can't guarantee it yet, but it does feel like this is going to go in an, in a distinctly anti-social welfare direction, even though they're talking about like the discretionary spending of wrestling tickets. They love to do that a lot, too. It's very, mm-hmm. this is why I don't but like But they act show. like stuff like housing and food is discretionary. Yes. Well, and they also make, like, they ignore a lot of factors that would tie in. Like, in this show, the kids who the kids who didn't work hard didn't get to go to the wrestling show. In the real world, the kids who work 16 hours a day, but it's not enough, don't get to eat. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's different. It's just like Well, it just made me way. think, like, I wonder what the socioeconomic demographic of the, the show would be, right? Mm-hmm. Because... Worth thinking about. Kids whose parents and who are themselves mm-hmm. on you know, that are on benefits, like, this would be incredibly offensive and very hurtful to them to watch. But they're probably not watching it. This is libertarian parents. This is parents who have the means to homeschool, who have the means to um, teach them this, like, this backwards morality that's Mm -hmm. like, so we're better than everybody else. It's like, what? What? Like, yeah, it's just really upsetting. It, it is. And you're going to see a lot of these. This is the kind of issue fundamentally with the Tuttle Twins show. Watching it as an adult, you're going to be able to see a lot of the logical fallacies at play, and you're going to be able to pick a lot of the arguments apart. Mm-hmm. But but look back on yourself. Look inside yourself and see if you could have done that when you were 10, 11, 12 years old. Uh-huh. Could, or would you have just believed this outright? Well, I guess what I was saying earlier ties into this. Like The types of parents who have their children watch this show are not... I wouldn't say they're making a good choice. I, I, yeah. The gang then arrives in 1626, specifically at the Plymouth Colony, to learn a lesson in bad history from what I would call the most important guest star in Tuttle history so far. It's me, William. William Bradford? Didn't your grandma tell you about me? We're pen pals. I'm the governor of the thriving town of Plymouth. As if it isn't Sorby himself. That's Kev. That's Kevin. God's not dead. He is surely alive. Kevin. Kevin Sorbo. He was the atheist <laughs> professor. Oh, you gotta. Oh, no. You gotta should... put Kevin Sorbo atheist professor highlight here. This semester, I propose that we refuse to waste our limited time together debating the existence of the big man in the sky. Fill in the papers I've just given you with three little words God is dead. I can't do what you want, I'm a Christian. Because he's like. God is dead. He's like the professor from the emails. If God was real, he would knock this eraser from my hand. And then the Marine gets up and like punches him. But like in a movie. We should cover God's Not Dead next year. Yeah, 2024. Um, there's three now. I feel we'll like there's four. We'll get to it. Four? We'll get to it. Yeah. Kevin Sorbo then explains to the children that the story you always hear in school about Plymouth Rock and Thanksgiving, well, it's totally wrong. It wasn't sympathetic natives providing agricultural assistance that saved the pilgrims, no, no, no. But actually, it was rejecting socialism and embracing capitalism instead. During our first winter, more than half of us died due to cold, disease, and starvation. Ah, man. But then the Native Americans taught you the value of gratitude and giving, and no one went hungry again Thanksgiving! Yes, the Native Americans did help a great deal, but we still struggled and starved for two more years. You see, for three years, we'd run our colony on a system where everyone worked the land and were forced to share the fruits of their labor equally. Duh, that sounds like our kids' club. And the socialism idea Grandma was talking about. Unfortunately, this system produced terrible results. Many people chose to do the bare minimum to get by. Because they were lazy? Like some kids I know? No, because they weren't incentivized or motivated to work hard. Okay, I don't know enough about the pilgrims. That doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right. So this is James in editing again, and I decided to dig into this uh, whole Plymouth 
colony socialism thing, and it turns out it is completely bunk in the most hilarious way possible. I did some digging. Um, I'm going to put the article on screen here that I primarily used for this research, but it turns out that the Plymouth Pilgrims were essentially indentured servants to the Virginia Company back in England. They weren't able to even own private land for seven years after the colony was founded because the Virginia Company wrote into the contract charter that they owned the land. It's absolutely insane. And so this was a failure of capitalism, totally a failure of capitalism, not socialism. Although I do think we can now give the Plymouth Pilgrims the honor of the first conservative Christians to be tricked into joining a multi-level marketing scheme. And yet among conservatives, this is a super popular story, this whole thing about the Plymouth colony giving up socialism and that being the real meaning of Thanksgiving. And if you really want to see that play out, let's listen to Rush Limbaugh talk about putting that story in his own children's book. And so the story of Thanksgiving that's taught is basically how without the Native Americans, there wouldn't be a country because the pilgrims would have died. At least the pilgrims are nice enough to pay the Indians back with a big Thanksgiving dinner. That's not at all what happened. It's not even close to what happened which is why I decided to write about it. Now, in the Revere book, the children's book, as I say, went into greater detail about some of the Native Americans who provided assistance to the arriving pilgrims. A whole lot of discussion here of Squanto, who he was, what he did, how he helped, the details. The point is that going back to the very first early days of the pilgrims arriving at Plymouth Rock is that socialism failed. That is just not on a broader level. That's just not how people operate. Human beings want to contribute and be a part of things and do what they can. We've they also don't... been, as, a civil, as human beings, we have been taking care of disabled people and children and people who can't work forever. Like, they've always been valued members of our community and... He's, he's really going to be like, well, if you don't work, you don't eat. Well, like, and it's just... Liber that's not how it worked. They were working their asses off, and they were also yeah. doing very bad things to the Native Americans. Libertarianism, as this kind of American libertarianism, relies on a very sad and tragic view of your fellow humanity. Yeah, like, like that the people just are... People are just born to be lazy and terrible, yeah. and you have to uh, motivate them with, with money and capitalism. Yeah. Well, and that you have to put their, like, well-being and livelihood on it. Which, again... Well, and you're also gonna see here this is a Tuttle trick. This is something they do, which is... Remember, before we time-traveled, we were talking about wrestling tickets to a mm -hmm. wrestling show. Now we're this talking about starvation. Like that. They jump between those two. And your brain, I call them Shapiro yep. bridges. Yep. Your brain builds a bridge. If somebody talks fast enough and presents two positions right next to each other, our brains will naturally try to build a bridge between them. I joke, it's how Ben Shapiro's entire career was built. And they just did it here. Wrestling tickets to food. Watch how it happens. It's difficult to work hard when you're starving, though. It's difficult to, to focus in school. It's difficult to take care of yourself when you're starving. It's difficult to do anything when you're starving. That's why we should feed everybody. Yeah, because it's like, oh, I'm going to give all the corn to this guy so his family can eat good while I starve. The point is they're making sure everybody has corn. They literally just did what I said in a transition joke. Look at it. Look at it. It's corn. I'm giving away corn for my family. Wrestling tickets. Wrestling tickets. Right in there. Same thing. Exact same. My ability to buy wrestling tickets means that no one should pay taxes. Yeah. By the same fucking logic. Like, I don't want my tax dollars to be spent on certain things, mm -hmm. but I still have to pay taxes. Yep. Jettison I'd like my money entirely. to go to fucking... Medicare for all instead of bombing children, but, you know, we don't get to fucking pick. Before, men tended the fields while families stayed home. Now, entire families gladly pitch in and farm together, increasing our food supply dramatically. I mean, they've always made women also work. They worked at home. They worked in the fields. They worked out. 
in factories. They've always worked. That's kind of silly, don't you think? Oh, yeah. And let's also... And they had the kids working, too. That that part is true. Connor Boyack and the Tuttle Twins, they won't just come out and say they want to repeal child labor laws. Like, they won't... Say... I think they want to repeal child labor laws. They're like, oh, we sponsor the Kids Entrepreneur Fair. And, like, the book I read, like, the girl had to sell apples so her dad could have his, like, cancer meds. And it's Jesus. like... Jesus! Yeah, and it's like, they are... They heard the children yearn for the mines, and they did not see any of the irony. How? How does that make sense mathematically? Why weren't the families pitching in to get more corn before... Because they want to have the perfect victim and they want to have somebody who is who deserves to have the extra, whereas they think that they were lazy before. Well, yeah, but, you know, the the like you said, the women, they didn't work in the fields until socialism made sure women stayed home and they never worked in the fields until capitalism and then everybody made corn. The year of our first Thanksgiving feast, we planted just 26 acres. Three years later, once we adopted freedom... Once we adopted freedom? Freedom for who, Kevin? We planted 184. That's seven times more food. And that's their math lesson for their homeschool curriculum. Oh, hi, Bradley. Kids, this is William Bradford, governor of Plymouth, ancestor of Hollywood, actor Clint Eastwood, and capitalist bad boy. We know, Grandma. Okay, I'm not going anywhere near Capitalist, capitalist bad, boy, bad Boy, but it does make me laugh that they made sure to shove Clint Eastwood into this. known Famously known as one of the five Republican celebrities. I've got Mr. Obama sitting here, and he's... I, I just was going to ask him a couple questions. So, Mr. President, how do you, uh, how do you handle... Uh, how do you handle promises that you've made? What do you mean, shut up? Clint Eastwood, Tim Allen, um, uh, James Woods. James Woods, uh, Rob Schneider. There's a fifth one. Hold on. Hold on. Kelsey Grammer. What? Yeah. Since when? Since forever. He's been a Republican since like the 80s. Did you not watch Frasier? Has no one watched I was Frasier? not raised by old people. Oh, I was. Yeah, Frasier, if you watch Frasier, that one, that was the least surprising Republican I've ever found was Kelsey Grammer. If he had been, if he had been a centrist, I would have been surprised. Do those crop circles look like exposed ankles to you? I'm not happy with how much- Shine on, you crazy Mormons! If you actually- used your comedic talents i'm hoping i can break one of you because one of you i believe is doing Get them this to for write a paycheck. for funny fridays send me an email and so from here ethan and emily jet off with gabby to the wormhole plane or wherever it is and stopping off at something that seems like an airport lounge for interdimensional beings she runs into nikola tesla in a hot tub whom she treats like an old friend and some unknown woman named beth who appears to be some kind of nemesis beth Gabby. Beth. Gabby. I researched her, and for the life of me, I cannot figure out who this woman is. Please let me know in the comments if you know who she is. Who's that? Hell if I know. When they said Tesla, I thought that was going to be Elon. I did too. Yeah. But Tesla and Beth, whoever she is, they are short-lived on this show, as it is now time for the debut of the Tuttle Twins' arch nemesis. Gabriella? As I live and breathe? Karl Marx! There he is! This is... I... Mm, this... Uh, yeah, stay right there. This is a moment for me. This is huge for me. And this is probably more than anything the re... This is like... Fan service. This is like, for me, hearing The Undertaker's gong. Like, this is like, <laughs> this is the villain of the show. You need to understand that. This man right here, he has been brought up many times. Only so far have we seen a painting and one piece of promo art with him in it. This is the Karl Marx debut on the Libertarian Kids show. I expect heat. This is like, this is Bash at the Beach, Hogan turns NWO, man. <laughs> Like, here we go, dude. You'll never RSVP to my communist party, Gabby. I like my parties with more food and a little less human suffering. Human suffering, huh? Yeah. Human suffering? Yeah. Yeah, capitalism notoriously 
minimizes human suffering. It does it does that well. Kids, this needy man is Karl Marx, fanboy of socialism and terrible father whose ideas led to the deaths of millions of people. James in editing here again. So They've used this Karl Marx was a terrible father joke twice now, and I really wanted to look into that, so I did. And it turns out it's basically, as far as I can tell, the literal exact opposite. Not that there's too many sources on it, but the one direct source I could find, Marx's son-in-law, Paul Lafargu, discussed his parenting particularly in an 1890 essay called Reminiscences of Marx. And here's a quote from that just to give you an idea of how off this terrible father thing seems to be. He, meaning Marx here, was a loving, gentle, and indulgent father. Children should educate their parents, he used to say. There was never even a trace of the bossy parent in his relations with his daughters, whose love for him was extraordinary. He never gave them an order, but asked them to do what he wished as a favor, or made them feel that they should not do what he wanted to forbid them. And yet a father could seldom have had more docile children than he. There were some reports from his lifetime of a possible affair with a housekeeper named Helene Delmuth, but the reports seemed to kind of differ, and honestly, what I saw in my very minimal research, it kind of looked like his buddy Frederick Ingalls might have actually been the dad, so... And otherwise, they talk about how Marx hated women on Tuttle Twins, but all I could ever find were clearly biased headlines like this one you see here from the Catholic World Report... And otherwise, I found reports indicating that Karl Marx was generally positive in regards to the interactions with the women in his life and within his movement. And really, at this point, I'm struggling a lot to figure out why the Tuttle Twins are using these jokes at all when actually looking into Marx's relationships with his daughters and the other women in his life made me more of a Marxist than I ever was before. Oh, you're on a little adventure with your grandkids? That is so cool. Me too. What in the... What is this character? This is so, like, stupid. I feel, okay, I'm going to say it right now, and I could be right, I could be wrong. Here's what I think is going to happen. I think they're going to overdo this. They're going to try so hard to make the kids think that he's dumb and stupid and a poopy head that they're going to, like, make him funny and kind of ridiculous. And, like, this is... I don't know. I I, yeah. I don't think they're going to do this well. I have a bad feeling about this. I want to know what, what he has to do with wrestling. This is the exact same shit they do to AOC. Socialism is when you have grandkids, so I have to have grandkids too, and everyone has to think that my grandkids are the same as your grandkids. Socialism is when the money is worth less than the toilet paper. And so people are using the cash as toilet paper because really the toilet paper holds more value. Think about that. Wunderbar! I've heard about this ride. A real historical simulation of socialism with the happy singing puppets and everything. <sighs> Here we go. I've been there. This theme park fucking rules. It's gonna be, it's a small world, but with socialism and how and, it's and grown, everyone's even though we literally killed their leaders. Yep. Socialism is great. Socialism is grand. We will all have a ball if we fall all the way. We're in for such a shit as the government. Now, to be fair, do we Lock do this is, on Sundays. Do Lock is... No, they do this at the Lesbian Socialist Republic. Yeah, this is actually... This is pink, the... But... This is the national anthem of the Lesbian Socialist Republic, so I'm just going to stand while this is playing. You're not a okay. citizen. Huh? But I respect them. You do respect them, okay. Obviously. I'm going to sit back down because somebody made it weird and no other reason. <laughs> So in this next portion of the show, we would see the Tuttle family, along with Marx, traveling down the It's a Socialist World ride, and the first place they will encounter is Greece. Specifically here, they would be talking about the 2009 to 2018 financial crisis and debt crisis in Greece. Now, the Tuttle Twins will blame a lot of this on Greece's free public higher education system, although in my research, I swear I could not find a single 
other place connecting their public education system to the debt crisis. The Greek constitution does guarantee free higher public education for all of its citizens, but the reports I read also indicated that those entrance exams are really difficult, making it kind of stupid to do the whole career student thing the Tuttles talk about here. In reality, the Greek financial crisis is just an extraordinarily complex problem that has roots in the U.S. financial crisis of 2008, Greece's exceptionally high military spending during the time period, and the extreme austerity measures imposed by other EU nations in order for them to provide financial support to the struggling country. And fundamentally, I think it's just impossible to do a crisis like this one justice within the context of an animated children's show. So socialism is just whatever we want it to be. That's what the rule is. Socialism is whatever a bad government is. Are they going to talk about, like, the democratic socialist countries that exist now that are the highest rates of happiness in the world? I'm going to be very curious to see. I feel like they will... I almost feel like they will bring them up and then try to retcon it and yep. be like, well, also actually, have the highest happiness in the world. And then the, like, I just realized they did the alien from Aqua Teen, but honestly, like, that's the voice I would rather him. that. I mean, I wouldn't mind an all-expenses-paid trip to Princeton. Oh, I like the way you see. Which is weird, because I usually hate women. Socialism is when you hate women. That is what Did that Karl word Mar means. I don't actually know anything about Karl Marx as a person, or his biography, or any of his works. Did they we're do a whole about. episode about how we can take good ideas from bad people? I remember, because there was a line of people. There was They had Ronald Reagan, and then it was Martin Luther King, and then they uh -huh. had Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, they Franklin. compared Martin Luther King cheating on his wife to, like... Ronald Reagan, like selling weapons illegally to fund capitalist revolution can, yeah can you explain a little bit about that i'm can you explain a little bit about how socialism doesn't work tuttle team i will give you money out of my wallet to even work the can words we... i ran contra into a single episode so just fuck all those people then i fuck feel like suffering. we are gonna pause during every verse of this song it's so disrespectful and yeah. inhumane Funny it also doesn't make sense because if you feed people and house them, they will work. Yeah. Because people want more than the bare minimum. I used to place people in jobs for a living. And the number one thing, the difference between people who got jobs and didn't get jobs, wasn't their mental health, wasn't their skills. It wasn't none of that. It was who had a car. It was who could get back and forth to that job. If you could get people back and forth to work, they went to work every single day. I don't want to hear none of this nonsense. You can't sing-songy kid show your way explaining a problem like the Berlin Wall. Socialism is grand, socialism is great. When extreme, it can lead to a communist state where individuals can own land or whatever is driving us. Communism is the best. No, if it was communism, the individuals would own the means of production. Which is kind of what they were talking about in the Pilgrim Land. Am I am I crazy? Yeah, no, they're they are actively they are actively contradicting themselves from earlier in the episode, which is a total trope. This here's the thing: Connor Boyack, Dan Harmon, Daniel. This, you all were like, man, we stumbled on a great idea with this libertarian. Yeah, it was socialism kids show. that was the problem in. Uh... <laughs> We stumbled on this great idea, Libertarian Kids Show. Why has no one ever done this? This is why. This is why no one has done this. When incentives are lost, we all bear the cost. But look how popular the bread line is. Mm, it must be very yummy bread. Oh, yes, yum, yum. We love the bread. Oh, the bread is the best bread ever. Silence! Who told you kids you could speak? Actually, without the freedom and incentives to make their own bread, the people relied on the government for food, which led to massive shortages. Yeah, they didn't have the incentive to make their own bread. That's why they were starving. Mm -hmm. They were just too lazy to make their own bread. Nothing else. The fact that they made the East German side socialist is the only reason for all of these problems, and there is absolutely no other reason to ask why might something else have caused this. Don't stop asking that. Socialism.
Hey everybody, James in editing again. So I actually decided to also educate myself a little bit on the whole East Germany situation. I knew some things, but not the whole story. And essentially what I found is kind of what I knew. East Germany was controlled by the Soviets after World War II. It was a communist state in that the government controlled the vast majority of employment, public industry, utility, things like that. And it's also generally accepted that East Germany was a totalitarian state with an exceptional and excessive amount of government control being exerted over the daily lives of its citizens. I mean, really though, we probably should note that plenty of capitalist countries also have totalitarian or authoritarian governments, so this really isn't a problem that is exclusive to the commies or even related to their economic outlook on life. And just once again, I think we see the Tuttle team trying to tackle a problem with their young audience that is far too complex to effectively discuss within the confines of a 25-minute children's cartoon. Are they people suffering and starving because of the government or because they're lazy? They don't know. Socialism is bad. Socialism works! It works every time! I wrote the book! We just have to go there to see for ourselves! <laughs> They really wasted their potential with him. Yeah, this is very annoying to they me. They could have done something different with this character. This is I, just stupid. I was expecting a final boss. I wanted an M. Bison level, like, problem for the kids to, or like... like... Yeah. Also, why did you... Like, this is, like, three We're episodes out from... two different places. This is, like, three episodes out from your season finale. Why didn't you save him for the end? Yeah, make a Christmas thing. You could have done Frederick with... Ingalls. Somebody else wrote the book. We were clickbaited. I want to see the wrestling. This is annoying. Yeah, if there's no more wrestling in this... We got this... four minutes left. Seven. What is this place? It's the Berlin Wall. After the devastation of World War II, Berlin was divided up. The West was controlled by nations where people had incentives to work. But the East was controlled by Communist Soviet Union. People who had... Yeah, that's what we're going to call West... Uh... Berlin, we're going to call it the people who had the incentives to work. Mm -hmm. That's actually how they split it up. They gave you a form. It said, do you want to work? And all in the huge Germans letters. said, do you, are, do you want to work? And it was just like a checkbox, yes or no. And if you check yes, they move you to the left. And if you check right, they, they you went to communism. They're just doing it wrong too. yoo -hoo, I have some ideas for you. Get down. They're shooting yeah. at us. No, they're just sending us the free bullets from afar. They are shooting at us! I think this is the first time, as I recall, they've had actual gunfire on the show, unless they had it in the last episode before this. It's the only one I haven't seen. Um, they've had guns, most notably in the Cuba episode, which, like, libertarian, socialist, I can only imagine that, like, they have to work guns in there to keep these parents happy, right? But, um, yeah, that's a lot of bullets for a kid's show. Also, they're giving us free bullets. Like, this Karl Marx is so terrible. You guys were better than this. Come on, where is that button? Come on, where is that button? Oh, yeah! She's gonna beat those communists with the power of a good old American hot pizza. and ready Little Caesar's Pizza. So as we start speeding towards the dramatic conclusion of this episode, the Tuttles and Grandma Gabby are being suppressed by East German Soviet gunfire, and in order to refuel their jazzy so they can time travel back home, the kids must recite libertarian talking points in order to fill the knowledge juice tank on the back of the jazzy. We need to let people keep what they earn and voluntarily share the extra stuff they produce. And I know what you might be thinking, and yes, combined with the sudden reappearance of Derek the raccoon and his tranquilizer darts from earlier in the show, this is potentially the laziest way to close out a show I've ever seen. Listen, I fucking hate taxes too, boy axe. Mm -hmm. But we have to pay them because we live in a society. They're happy here to discuss the de-incentivization of socialism, but they don't discuss the massive and unhinged exploitation of the oligarchic capitalist system we have now, where big money means that you can forever distort the rules to benefit you and keep you in power in perpetuity. 
Why does Bezos pay less money than his secretary in taxes? But you'll notice that billionaires are only referenced on this show as fun and playful hero geniuses. That's important to their brand. So after escaping communist Germany, the kids return to madness in their clubhouse. However, by showing all the other kids the true power of capital-incentivized labor, they restore order to all the chaos. If we really want to make it a super lucha libre, I think we should all work to get that money ourselves. Even if it means that I can't go. What? But then I can't go either! That's not fair! It's exactly fair, Corinne. The socialist idea of all of us paying for each other sounded nice, but the incentives were horrible and we were all less motivated to sell. This is the thing that drives me up a wall, because we're talking about wrestling tickets, but we're also talking about public utilities. We're talking about what is and is not something that is determined to be necessary for life and function in modern society. Wrestling tickets are clearly and obviously not something that is a need. They are a luxury item, and I say that as a diehard wrestling fan. That's a luxury item. But what they're doing here is an all-too-common trope for libertarian or right-leaning individuals who want to try and challenge socialist ideology is to conflate the idea of not having access to luxuries with the socialist element of sharing towards a collective good. People keep what they earn and then they give what they want. Well, billionaires and other extremely rich people don't ever... Conveniently, they don't ever feel like giving away the rest. They well, don't ever feel like giving what they want. Well, they... So, that's clearly their choice, right? D despite contributing capital only and no labor. Yes, can you... Capital is... Uh, the financial backing for a business organization or institution. So, basically, I pay for things, so I just get to skim money off the top. I don't actually have to work for it. Ugh! Oh, you're forcing me to come to terms with the consequences of my own actions! Yeah, that's what all those people that starved to death were, were doing. They were feeling the consequences of their actions. They were clearly too lazy to go work, so they had to stay in the bread lines. All I'm going to say, Tuttle Team, because again, I like to believe you're watching this. You know that most people that are on benefits also have full-time jobs? Multiple, yep. multiple full-time jobs. Tuttle and the Team. And the money that they get is barely anything. Yeah. It's a joke, the benefits that people actually get despite working their asses off and in a final free market masterstroke the kids sell out their remaining tamale stock at the wrestling show itself by i swear to joseph smith himself offering a bulk discount to homeschool families bulk discount for homeschool families and they're in a van no way that's funny damn it and then Emily makes sure to completely end that whole Medicare for all debate by making sure the tonsil kid gets to see the wrestling show. So they're like, you know, we won't, we don't want uh, Medicare for all, but we will pay a little bit of money to your, to your GoFundMe if your child has cancer. I feel like this children's television program just, just told us. You don't need universal health care. We have Make-A-Wish. <sighs> That's what I hear. This kid was sick. That's why he couldn't work. Yeah. He probably has other bigger problems, but we paid for him to get into the wrestling show. So it's fine. His parents are in debt for that surgery. They're wondering how they're going to pay the mortgage payment next month. They're struggling. He's in the wrestling show. He should have worked harder. <laughs> Communist condor sells merch for a profit? It's their ideals that matter, not their actions. But how can you have communism if you use an iPhone? Communists aren't the ones printing the Che Guevara shirts. It's dirty capitalists like the people behind this show that make those. Grandma Gabby comes in for one more quick match, obviously, to take out the communist condor before the episode fades to black. Do you want to explain what that means? I'll give him credit for that one. So, unmasking is a big deal in Lucha Libre. Uh, your mask is, like, a huge part of your identity. And having your mask taken off is very, like, it's a big sign of disrespect and humbling. Uh, a lot of times, like, they're put on the line in matches, like mask versus mask. Like, whoever loses has to take well, the mask off. Well, mask versus mask can mean other things. 
Modern times have changed the meaning of a lot of words. She retired undefeated, just like all of the CEOs and other boomers that refused to retire and open up jobs. Well, that about wraps up the episode. Um, I, I had hope at the beginning, and then that hope died about seven minutes in. How did you how did you feel about uh, your Tuttle wrestling experience, Jen? Not enough wrestling, too much Tuttle. Too much Tut, not enough grap. We didn't have nearly <laughs> enough grap, and I wish we had some grap. Um, they Obviously, did some stuff we need all some more right. Wrestling content from you. I hey man, um, you know wrestling with your grad. Hit us up. I absolutely. We got to do a profile on La Abuelita. She retired undefeated and unmasked. Did you hear? That'd be a good like April Fool's episode. Oh yeah. Oh. Do like a biography yeah. about uh, Grandma Gabby. Well, and we could talk about how she ran for the you know mayor of a place as a libertarian and ruined it with her terrible ideas. Oh wait, that's Glenn Jacobs Kane, my childhood hero. Anyway, um. Yeah, this was about what I expected it to be. I am glad they minimized the Kevin Sorbo. I was worried they were going to give him a lot more time. They actually cut that segment shorter than usual. So I think somebody at um, He's busy. Tut headquarters... Uh, well, I, I think they may have realized that Kevin wasn't that good or important. So I don't like Kevin Sorbo. And I want Kevin to trash Sorbo talk taking him. second fiddle to Karl Marx in my Libertarian Mormon Kids show. Also, what was that Karl Marx? Y'all had a chance to stupid. make like the greatest villain in your show's history and you bungled it beyond all recognition. Like, do better. Write better. Oh my god. Do better politically. Write better comedically. That's about all I got to say. Anything else, Jen? Um... Remember to consensually smash that like and subscribe button. Remember to follow us on social media. Check out my link tree. Um, there will be no normal video next week. We are streaming instead at 7 p.m. Central for the patrons and community members. Yep. Um, we have merch. We have a merch then. discount, Holiday 15. We also, of course, are sponsored by Casetify. You can check the link out in the info box for... That discount code, um, happy, that, happy, uh, indigenous people's day, indigenous people's happy day, indigenous people's day, um, and free Palestine. Yeah. And free Palestine and do something kick ass. <laughs> go to, go see some local wrestling this weekend. That's how you can negate the evil. I don't think there will be any this, this weekend, this but go see some, some live wrestling. Go someday. see some live wrestling great. at least once in your life. And if this weekend, even if you don't know. What's going on? It's just better showing up, if you you'll don't. be entertained. It's better if you don't. Go in, just start cheering what everybody else is and see where the night takes you. Yeah. Love you guys. Till the end of time. Bye. See you soon. Bye.